Okay, and we're underneath the hood of a uh, 1970, oh, the year they made them, uh, AAR CUDA. Uh, this guy is the real deal. There is no question that this is a real AAR CUDA, the way it was from the factory in 1970. Has the correct air cleaner, 346 parallel designation. Has a trio of uh, 1050 CFM Holly carburetors underneath there, hiding under there, you can't see them. Has an aluminum intake manifold the way they came, Edelbrock supplied them. Has the correct valve pan covers, a correct high flow exhaust the way these cars came from the factory. This was a very special engine. This had nothing to do with the standard 340 uh, that was available in dusters and darts and, and, and some of the other Chrysler products. These were a very specific for this application only. They had their own block, they had their own heads, they had their own valve train, their own cam and their own induction system. Um, the rocker arms on this aren't stamped steel. These are uh, mechanical rocker arms uh, that you can set if you want, instead of just being a standard stamped steel ones. The heads have a little bit of an offset uh, for the intake passages. Uh, there's just so many things different about this engine to configure it for a uh, race basis engine. So you could take this motor and uh, uh, Chrysler offered these uh, uh, with a six-pack setup from the factory, uh, but you could turn this into a Trans Am racer with very, very little application. So this motor is designed, and I think they rated it at 290 horsepower. It far surpassed that. That's not even close to the uh, uh, output of this engine from the factory. They were never offered with air conditioning. They only came with a power steering or power brake option, which this one has both. It has steering and brakes on it. It still has the heat uh, hooked up for the passenger compartment just the way it should be. It has a correct radiator. It has the correct seven blade clutch fan on it. Um, it's just a, a nice original car. It still retains its original fender tags. Uh, the um, uh, fender tag showing you all your uh, uh, options on the car and also Trans Am designation for the second tag. Uh, it has a fiberglass hood on it, just the way they came from the factory. They're painted to the inner part of the fender the way uh, they came from the factory in 1970. And uh, you got yourself a great looking engine compartment, new battery, all new hoses, uh, everything as it should be on a original 1970 Trans Am series uh, AAR car. And that's what you have here. Uh, radiator core support's never been bumped or anything. It's still intact just the way it was from the factory. Uh, all the numbers and everything, all your designation is still intact also. Uh, you've got a good representation of a 1970 AAR uh, car, just the way it was from the factory. Let's go over the rest of it and see what we can show you. Hi, you're at Hanksters in Daytona Beach, Florida. And today our guest is a one-year only, AAR Cuda. Fantastic car, um, great color combination. And it was only offered one year, and that was it. It's a Trans Am series car. Uh, they were purpose-built, and uh, it's a, just a fantastic piece of racing history. So let's go over it. Fiberglass hood, a lightweight fiberglass hood on these vehicles. This particular car, whenever we got it about a week ago, still had the original factory springs attached to this hood. Chrysler did have a bolt in that. <clears throat> to remove those springs because the springs had so much pressure on them because they had to lift the steel hood. It was the same spring assembly for the steel hood as they gave for the lightweight fiberglass hood. But what happened through time is the hood from the spring pressure would start to heave up through the center here. We removed the springs, so now you have to use a prop rod to hold the hood up, but the, the hood is almost back to where it should be. If you notice, this side is a little bit high yet. If we take it out and put a in the sun, it's going to go back to where it should be. It's awful close to <clears throat> being a very nice fit on it now, but it will be by the time this car is shipped. It will be a precise fit on it. It does have a nice uh, fit uh, distance-wise. It's about an eighth of an inch the whole way around it. It is a ram air system in this car. Everything is sealed up to this cold air intake system. So it was a, a, a real ram air system from the factory. The correct hood hold downs with the curvature type uh, stainless steel tops on them. And this is the correct finish on this car. It's some, somewhat of a semi-flat black, a matte black finish uh, that does the whole top of the car in front and stops at the uh, end of the uh, rear side window. 
across the very top of the doors. It's about an inch wide. Um, nice dramatic look to the car, but it, uh, it, it really, really adds to the aesthetics of the car. For these AAR cars also, the, uh, where this is normally argent color on a uh, standard CUDA, this particular car and all AAR cars, they're uh, a flat uh, finish type on it. A little crack right here, uh, just shrinkage through age. There's a little tiny one here and a little tiny one here. You can hardly fit your finger in it. You could fix it if you wanted to, it's originality, so I would leave it alone. Uh, real nice finite trim around the uh, grill area. You can see it's all uh, stainless trim around it. Really gives it a nice dramatic effect. And also in the center section, you can see it's inset down in here uh, with some nice finite uh, stainless trim around the grill back and set into the car. Fog lights on the front, which are an option on these vehicles. Bumper fitment on the front is very, very nice. A little bit further over that way than this way. I mean, it's well within production standards, but if you moved it that way, uh, an eighth of an inch should be precise. But it's certainly acceptable the way it is right now. The uh, front valance still has its original type uh, a grill in it. It does have the uh, AAR only uh, air deflectors on the side of it. The Trans Am Challengers had two separate ones underneath of the Lance. Um, CUDA Plymouth chose to put them on the sides as air deflectors. Serve the same basic purpose. This is just a little more dramatic. Um, nice looking front end of this car. Everything lines up as it should. It's a great looking car. Chrome on the front bumper is very nice. It's not uh, I deteriorated at all. There's no scrapes or anything marked on the uh, top of the uh, bumper itself from somebody putting their feet on it or anything. <coughs> it's nice, uh, nice nose on this car. Let's go down the side, see what we can find there. Okay, driver's side of our AAR car. Uh, again, this is AAR striping only. This is the way they came. There's your deflectors. You can see more dramatically on the side here from the uh, front view. Uh, side marker lamp just as flush mount as you could possibly hope for. Um, fender lip molding, again I can't even get my fingernail in there, just as nice as can possibly be. Fender the door to, to rocker panel, look at that. That's totally amazing. Really, really nice fitment on that. Um, Here's to be the correct wiper arms and blades. They're tucked down in there. They're hard to see, but it, it, it appears that they are the correct arms and blades on this vehicle. A couple little tiny dingies, one here and one here, on this uh, trim at the base of the windshield. Really can't see it, but uh, I can feel a couple little marks there. Everything else on it is really nice as to be. Tinted glass with the sun fade on the top where the uh, dashboard transitions onto the base of the windshield just as clean and clear as could possibly be. Your VIN tag is nice and clean and legible and attached just the way it should be. Um, nice clean setup there. On the roof, very seldom we find any deterioration or anything up on the roof. Uh, it's real nice that there's no uh, dents or marks or anything from falling on it through the years. and. Uh, the finish itself on the uh, uh, paint just really, really came out nice. Uh, we just had this car wet sanded and buffed and it, it just turned into a completely different vehicle than whatever we received it, just from sitting for so many years. Again, your fitment of the uh, door panels to the rocker panel, to the quarter panel, to the front fender. You'll not find a, a nicer fit than that. Grip rail molding, same way. Tinted glass on the side of this guy too. How about that? That's a, an option. Look at this fitment. Front window to the rear glass is just precise. It could not be any nicer. And here's our striping that terminates back here, like I said, at the back uh, of the rear side glass. Sport mirrors, both sides, color keyed. Uh, there's no marks or dings or anything on this door. It's just as nice as can be. Usually there's some deterioration on these um, door latches. This one does not have any. Absolutely none. And it appears to be original too. <laughs> and again, look at the footprint of this thing. This guy is really spot on, right on the money. Exhausts come out on all Trans Am Mopars, whether it's a TA Challenger or an AAR Cuda, they come out in front of the rear wheels. There's two mufflers on it. 
positioned right about here. And the exhaust goes in the front, and it also comes out the front. Loops around and then comes out here. Uh, pretty nice setup. Saved a lot of weight, a lot of pipe, and a pretty good flowing setup, actually. Trim around the back window. No marks whatsoever on this side. Hat shelf is, I'm going to say it's a replacement. It's too nice to not be a, a replacement. There would have to be some kind of fading or something through the years. This one has absolutely none. Uh, also, the rear glass is tinted. So we got the tinted glass all around on this guy. Fender loop molding. Doesn't get any better than that. <clears throat> CUDA AAR designation. Went through the whole side of this car. Uh, not a single blemish, not a single mark. Uh, everything really looks up to snuff on it. The paint, whenever we got it, looked like it needed a good wet sand and buff, which it received, and I don't see anything like that. It's about as nice as we'd ever hope to find one. It's just really spot on now. Wheels and tire combination. They are 15 inch, that's the way they came from Mopar. One size larger in the back than there was in the front. That's the way they came from the factory. BFG, radial TAs on it. Uh, kind of a tire choice uh, from anybody right now, whether it's a, a Camaro, a Chevelle, or a, a Cuda, Roadrunner, whatever. It seems like everyone wants to use uh, BFGs on it. Good radial tire, nice dramatic look to it, nice small white letters. Uh, great looking combination. That side of this car is as straight as you'll ever find one. I mean, this is like right on the money. I cannot believe how that door fits the entire body of this car. Fantastic driver's license. Let's see what we find out back. Okay, tail section of our AAR car. Again, as you can see the rear deck, just our fitment is absolutely gorgeous. And head on the back, just where it should be, right rear. Uh, spoiler, AAR only. This is different than the TA Challenger. Challenger uses a totally different configuration. It uh, doesn't look at all like this. AAR only. The uh, tail section where it uh, can't find one that's going to fit any better than that. That is absolutely spot on fitment wise, that rear deck. And again, you've got your real nice finite trim the whole way around uh, the rear um, back part of this vehicle. It's a little tiny. What did I feel? I thought I felt something there. I don't know. I can't find it. I thought I felt something and I can't see it. Uh, trim around the uh, tail lights themselves, just as nice as can possibly be. A nice clear, shiny lenses on it, semi flat black on the uh, a filler panel in the back, just the way it should be. The uh, bumperettes line up very nicely with your <coughs> cuts in the rear valance. No holes in the rear valance on this guy. This is a uh, uh, a standard rear valance on the car. They didn't use the cutouts because your pipes come out in front of the rear wheels. So this is totally different. Gives it a nice clean look in the back. A really nice dramatic look. One more side because there's certainly nothing on the back of this thing. The paint on this car is just absolutely stunning. Now. I can't believe what a transformation it made from, <coughs> from when we got it to just having it wet sanded and buffed to this degree. Really spot on at this point. One more side. Okay, hey, passenger side, our last side, again, AAR designation. We'll go over that in a second here. Um, side marker lamp, same way. I forgot to mention on the other side, but I know what it is. I've seen it under all tin. Absolutely no bondo whatsoever. Wheel lip molding, just as sweet as you'd ever want to find. Sail panels, back window, trim around the back window. I really don't feel a single thing there. Just as nice as can be. Check this out. Look at this. Are you kidding me? Look at that door, quarter panel, rocker panel. Really? Will lift or will it? Uh, drip rail. Not a single mark, not a single imperfection. Check this window out, too. <laughs> All of them. Passenger mirror, you gotta have that. Trim around the front light. Yeah. Well, there's a little tiny mark here. I don't know why, but there's a mark here and one over there on that side. You can hardly see them. You have to look at a reflection to see them. If you look right on, they're not there. 
but there is a little imperfection in this uh, piece of trim here. I just want you to know that it is there. Again, the door. Still haven't found any marks or chips or anything in the paint. Absolutely none. Well, there was one. Let me see if it is gone. There is on the roof. I knew I saw something. There's a little bit of a scratch. You have to look to see it. It's not through the finish, but there is a scratch on the roof. And if you catch it in the right light, you can see it. Um, it's certainly nothing that warrants repainting the whole top part of this car. Uh, you've got to really look to see it, but I, I, I am telling you that there is a little starts here. It goes like this. Looks like somebody had something on there and then pulled it off. About that long. That's it. Door handle, same as the other one. Absolutely flawless. <clears throat> Again, look at the fitment of this. Everything. Look. Had to start the way it should be. Marker light, back up where we started here. Fantastic, fantastic car. Very rare piece of uh, automotive history here. Uh, 1970 is the only year Chrysler marketed these cars. They did this one, they did the Challenger TA. Uh, these cars, AAR, that stands for All American Racer. And that was campaigned by Dan Gurney. Dan Gurney's race team was called All American Racing. And so actually Plymouth made this car for Gurney and designated it after his race team because that's who campaigned this car in Trans Am Racing uh, in the uh, 70s, early 70s. Uh, it was a series that uh, everybody watched on TV. You couldn't stay away from it. You had Mark Donahue uh, for Penske running a uh, Z28 Camaro. You had uh, Fulmer running a Boss 302. You had uh, Sam Posey in a Trans Am Challenger. Uh, and of course there were, you know, Pontiac had a, uh, a Firebird in there and so did uh, uh, AMC had a uh, Javelin. Uh, they were all banging doors on the weekends. It was a great series. It was Trans Am Racing. This is the basis for that Trans Am Series car. It came as a 360. They offered a kit that you could put this into a 305 cubic inch motor. They de-stroked this and uh, made it a 305. Uh, so Mopar chose for their street model to do this and sell you the kit. Uh, the other manufacturers chose to put them out as 302 cubic inch with a 30,000 overboard that gave you uh, 305 cubic inches. Fantastic running cars, great piece of American history. Uh, they made very few of these cars. They're not like a big production number car. Uh, a lot of them were automatics. This guy happens to be a three pedal car though. It is a four speed car. Uh, which you're going to see our undercarriage presentation and the uh, interior video here in a second. But the exterior of this car is very, very nice. It's certainly well above a driver quality car. Um, it's a great piece of American history. Take a look at it. Hangsters in Daytona Beach, Florida. In fact, come down, take a look at it. We encourage everybody to come down and look at these cars. We'll drive them together. We'll go over them. We'll put them on a rack for you so that you can see every little tiny amenity on this car. Or if there's any defects that I missed, you can find them. But this is as nice a representation of a CUDA that you will find. And it is the real deal. Hangsters, Daytona Beach, Florida. All right, we're inside of our AAR CUDA. I'm not going to say the year because they only made it one year. Um, this car is as nice a, re a representation of one of these as you can find. Again, the headliner, tight as a drum, dumb light working, sun visors just as nice as can be, the stitching is still intact, not coming loose, day night mirror, it's not faded at all on the uh, uh, mirror part of it. <clears throat> the dashboard, which I stated uh, whenever we did the outside video, that uh, uh, it was really nice transitioning onto the base of the windshield. This is the original dash in this car. It has not been replaced. It is not an overlay dash. It's the original dash. Uh, it does have a quadrant of uh, gauges in it. It has a speedometer. It has tachometer. It has all your other gauges and a, uh, um, a clock. It does have the original equipment, Mopar AM radio that came with the car, um, <clears throat> and, and full instrumentation, the gas gauge, temp gauge, um, uh, oil pressure and uh, amp. Uh, these cars weren't available with air conditioning so there's no uh, provisions for air whatsoever on a car. It has a console in the center. It also has one on the dashboard. Hey, what do we got here? Check this out. There's the original owner's manual and uh, warranty papers with it from 1970. Yet. How about that? 
Um, steering wheel. It is a wood grain style wheel with the tri spokes on it. And there are no cracks whatsoever on this wheel. Absolutely none. Uh, the finish on it is still nice. It still retains a lot of its wood grain type uh, finish. Uh, just as nice as you'd ever want. It has seat belts in the back, seat belts in the front. The uh, panels in the back, which usually start to uh, deteriorate with age, uh, these are nice and clean and clear and crisp just the way they should be. Your window cranks in the back, your seat back panels are just as nice and clean as you'd ever want to find. Loop uh, pile carpeting just the way they came uh, from the factory. Nice shiny new uh, door sills on it. Uh, the correct console and the wood grain and chrome trim on the console is just as it was when it was new. Really, really a nice, clean uh, looking car. Original molded type armrests on the front doors, no deterioration whatsoever on your door panels. Usually these things are starting to weather on the top part of them just from sun beating on them through the years. This has none anywhere, back or front. Uh, door rubbers and window rubbers on top, all new and nice and resilient, nice rubber. Uh, everything's been replaced and refreshed. Uh, and the most important of everything, check this out. We got three pedals in this guy. One, two, three, four. One, two, three pedals. This is a four-speed car. Very, very rare option to find in a uh, AAR uh, CUDA. Uh, or a Challenger for that matter. Very difficult to find these. Most of them were produced in automatics. Um, about a third of them, I believe, number-wise, a little over a thousand, I think, were made with uh, uh, four-speeds. This is one of those cars. A fantastic, fantastic uh, combination. Great running car. Um, it is not a numbers-correct car. The engine is a Trans Am motor. It is not a standard 340 engine. It is Trans Am, cast right into the side of the block. does retain its cast iron Trans Am series heads and valve train. Uh, the numbers are, I, I, can't, I don't remember, they're going to be a couple hundred numbers off. Devin will take some pictures and show you, but uh, the numbers, uh, the engine itself is a Trans Am motor in a Trans Am car. So this is a car that uh, started life as a Trans Am, not a look-alike, not a clone. Um, it, it's the real deal. And three pedals. You got to take a look at this one. It's at Hangsters in Daytona Beach, Florida. Okay, let's see what we got here. We have <coughs> tachometer working. We have left turn signal working. Right turn signal functioning. Gas gauge shows us about an eighth of a tank. Oil pressure is reading about in the middle. Temperature is going to be just starting to come up. Amp gauge is working. Clock is not working. Let's see what we have for wipers. We have wipers that are working. Okay, let's see. And a horn that works. Let's see our reverse light, see if that works just by chance. How about that? Eh? Reverse light works. Um, let's go for a ride. See what this guy runs like. Nice smooth shifter. to get that functioning, that's for sure. Uh, it goes down the road straight. Let's try to brake no hand and see what happens. Oh. Pulls off to the left a little bit. Temperature coming up, running nice and cool. 
but it is starting to come up. Again, no hands, just to see if it still pulls to the left. Yeah, a little tiny bit. It could be just because they haven't been used. Other than that, the car straight as an arrow, runs great. Fantastic car. Speedometer working like it should, not working, all the gauges functioning. Well, we're underneath our Trans, -Seri Trans Am Series. Uh, AAR CUDA. Um, the real deal. It's a uh, it's it's a real car. It heavy duty sway bar in the front. This brakes in the front just the way they were. <coughs> this particular car has power steering on it. It does have a new starter just installed on the vehicle. It has a uh, uh, standard cast iron exhaust manifolds. Uh, Two and an eighth inch pipes heading toward the uh, uh, Trans Am only series mufflers. Uh, oil and filter was just changed. You can see that the um, subframe sections are really, really nice where they come down. Uh, the wheel wells transition onto the base of them where the torque boxes are. Nice. No one's made any attempt to jack them up through the years. There is a little jack mark right here, uh, just from someone having a jack stand on it. There is a little crease here in the subframe itself. Somebody must have been pulling it onto a rack at some point and put a little bit of a crease in that. It certainly doesn't uh, hurt the structural integrity of this vehicle in any way whatsoever. Uh, but it is there. It's a mark I just want to point out and show you. Uh, this is the um, a Trans Am uh, block and heads that came with these cars in 1970. It is not a numbers correct for this car engine. So it's a replacement engine out of another car because it does have numbers on it. The floor pans uh, appear to be all original and undisrupted. Uh, original brake lines still heading toward the back, still with its wire wrapping on it. Uh, dual fuel lines the way they were in 1970, and they are still the original fuel lines also. A uh, new U-joint on the uh, drive shaft. No leaks whatsoever on the tail shaft of the transmission or the speedometer uh, cable or the transmission itself. Um, 833 uh, Mopar tranny, totally indestructible. Uh, you can't hurt these things, not at all. And as you can see, there's no leaks whatsoever in the uh, engine, bell housing area, or transmission. Everything in this vehicle is dry, at least for the moment. It's a muscle car, so at some point of its life, don't be surprised if there's a drop on the floor. It's just the way these uh, gaskets were stacked, and it's just something that's inevitable. Uh, but at this point, there are no leaks in this vehicle. The um, floors themselves, appear to be all original. I don't see any place where it's been uh, repaired. A little tiny bit of a crease on the one floor right there. Again, somebody apparently got too close when they were pulling it up on the rack. Um, on that side, this side is just fine. Parking brake, uh, original and still installed and functional. Uh, new shocks in the front. Someone's just put a new set of shocks in the front. Uh, we're halfway back through here and I don't see anything at all. Uh, you can see the floor pans are just as nice and clean and straight as could be. And again, the entire drive line totally dry. Uh, everything is just completely uh, oil free at this point. Uh, we just took this car for a ride and um, it's, it's, if it was going to leak, it would be doing it now. There's none. So let's do the other half, see what we can show you. Okay, second half of our AAR Trans Am series car. Um, <clears throat> again, the uh, subframes in the back. Uh, you can see where someone has hooked something in here during transportation at one point. Same with this side. It's not torn or anything, but you can see where it had a hook in it and pulled it just a little tiny bit. Subframes themselves are very, very, very nice. Uh, the uh, torque boxes are nice and solid. Uh, nice heavy duty ones just the way they came from the factory. The um, springs still have a nice arch to them. Actually have a set of uh, little helper springs on them there to give it a little bit more of a rear stance. 
the drum brakes fin in the back just the way they came from the factory. <clears throat> AAR and Trans Am Challenger only style mufflers. That's the only time they use these in any year, any car. This is it. Trans Am series. Uh, go in front, come out the front. Exit right in front of the uh, rear wheels. Uh, eight and three quarter heavy duty Mopar rear. Again, not leaking. You can see that. Uh, new shocks in the back. Drop downs in the uh, quarters are just as nice and sweet as can be. Still retain their original tabs uh, from the factory. Subframes up over the uh, uh, rear axle are just as sweet and nice as you'd ever want to see. The uh, floor pans are very, very evident at this point because there's no mufflers in the back here to, <coughs> to hide them. Um, gas tank, original gas tank on it also, original strapping. Little dinghy here, same guy that pulled it in on that side and hit the frame in the front and scraped it on the side. Hit the gas tank somehow with it too. Uh, a little bit of a dent, certainly nothing to, to uh, concern yourself with, but it, it does have a little mark there. I just want you to know that. Uh, the entire vehicle is just as straight and nice as you'd ever want to find. Uh, we just went over the entire undercarriage of this car with you. And uh, Devin's going to take some real high resolution photos so that you can see um, the, the, the vehicle. You can take the photos themselves and blow them up because they are high resolution so you can get a real, real close look at it. You can see fly dirt on it if you, can, if you want. But nice dry undercarriage, nice solid undercarriage, uh, no perforations, no rust evident through the years. Uh, everything uh, appears to be just as solid and nice and clean under this car as in 1970 when it was produced by, uh, uh, by Plymouth Chrysler Corporation. So it's here at Hangster, so you've got to take a look at it if you're in the market for a TA car.